how do we find these three important things that we need in order to plot these graphs? If you look at this first function, and for each of the every, every other function, my apologies, you will need the x-intercept, the y-intercept, and the turning points of those functions. Right, so I'm going to make that TPS turn points with an S, points, because a cubic function has two po turning points, right? Remember what we've done in the previous lesson, the degree, if the degree is three, there must be two turning points for a polynomial function. Okay, so I'm going to start off with the easiest thing, which is obviously to find the y-intercept. And if you look at all these functions, finding the y-intercept is very, very easy. All you do is you equate x to zero and you solve for y. So I'm going to do the first one using the long method, x cubed plus 6x squared. And I'll just do that on a new sheet, right? So we take x cubed plus 6x squared. Let's just do this a little bit neater, right? And this is the function y equals this thing, right? Is equal to y or y is equal to x cubed plus 6x squared. And what I'm going to do over here is I'm going to say, okay, I know that when something touches the x-axis, when something touches the x-axis, so I've got a, I've got a, I've got a set of axes like that, and if I was sketching a parabola, or even in this particular case, I'm now sketching a cubic graph. For argument's sake, the cubic graph could look like that. Whenever I have my x-intercepts, and this is not the graph of this one, this is just an arbitrary cubic graph. Whenever I find the x-intercepts over there. I know that I'm going to have a, this is on the line y is equal to 0. This is on the x-axis, right? The x-axis, which when a graph touches it, gives you the, okay, let's just change the color there because that's hurting my eyes. This is the line y equals to 0, which is known as the x-axis, right? And the x-axis has the equation y equals to 0 because we know whenever it touches the x-axis, my y value is going to be 0. So because of that, I substitute 0 into every x that I see, plus 6 into 0 squared, and I solve for y. Therefore, I get 0 cubed is just 0, plus 6 times 0 squared, 0 squared is 0, 6 times 0 is 0, 0 plus 0 is just 0. And that's going to give me my y-intercept is equal to 0. So we know as a coordinate, we know that the, the x value, sorry, I'm solving for the y-intercept. My bad, my bad. Um, with the x-intercept, we make y equal to 0 over here. And with the y-intercept, which occurs over here, uh, let's just make that in red, right? That's the y-intercept. This here is the y-axis. And the y-axis corresponds to the line x is equal to 0. And because of that, we make x 0 in the equation we solve for y. Right, so I'm working with this one over here now, and that's the one I'm going to do in the next video. Okay, so what I'm now looking at specifically, I'm saying that my x value is 0, and I solve to the y value over here that also came out to be 0. Okay, it's not always going to stay 0, 0, and we'll see that in the next examples, right? So this is my y-intercept. So let's go one page back and we say that the y's intercept occurs at 0 and 0. Let's do the next one. x cubed plus 2x squared minus 3x. x cubed plus 2x squared minus 3x. And this is also equal to y because that's my function. I'm solving for the y, y intercept, right? So I'm solving for the y intercept. And when I solve for the y intercept, I make my x equal to 0. So all I do is I'm going to put in 0 in the x, 0 cubed plus 2 times 0 squared minus 3 times 0. That's 0. That's 0 times 0, which is 0, and 0 times 2 is 0, and so that's 0. So all of this is just 0 plus 0 plus 0, and at that point you can put it in the calculator. And we get an answer of y equal to 0. So I've just solved for the y value being equal to 0, and I started with saying that the x value was equal to 0. So this one also gives me a y-intercept of 0 and 0. Okay, let's do the next one. x cubed plus x squared minus x minus 1. This one is x cubed plus x squared minus x minus 1. 
and that's equal to y equals 0. So let's do this. Let's just substitute in 0. And what do I get? 0 plus 0, minus 0, all of that is 0. That's going to give me negative 1. Okay. So the next one is I'm not going to do this incredibly long way. That's 0 and the x because the x that has 0 corresponds to y with negative 1. 0 and minus 1. Okay, so that's my y-intercept. This one's very easy. If we substitute 0 in there, 0 cubed is just 0. Minus 12 times 0 is just minus 0. So 0 minus 0 is 0 plus 16, and that's going to give me 0 and positive 16. For this one over here, that's going to fall away. That will fall away. That will fall away when I equate x to 0, and I'm left with negative 2. 0 and negative 2. Okay, in the next video, we're going to start solving each of these for the x-intercept. Now, the first two are very easy. You should be able to do that using grade 9, grade 8, or even grade 10 um, algebra. Um, but the next three, what we're going to do is we're going to start using a technique called synthetic division. These ones are very easy because we see that there's x's in every term. And when there's an x in every term, we call that a common factor. So just keep that in mind. That's all part of the next video.